We have discovered a lot about the evolution of life on Earth. From humans, to dinosaurs, to the abundance of life forms during the Cambrian explosion, to the early multicellular and unicellular organisms. But what about the very beginning of life? How did life evolve from simple organic molecules into cells capable of the complex processes we know today? Understanding how life evolved on our own planet may help us to understand the potential for life on others. Some early thoughts on the origin of life suggested that from nucleotide and amino acid soups arose the first self-replicating systems made of both RNA, the molecules that stores genetic information, and proteins, the molecules that provide the enzymatic functions required for RNA to replicate. However, this raises the chicken and egg problem. Did the information carrier or catalytic molecule evolve first? In 1962, Alexander Rich proposed that an RNA-like polymer capable of self-replication and able to organise amino acids into proteins was the first polynucleotide molecule that gave rise to RNA and DNA. However, it was in 1986 that Walter Gilbert gave life to the hypothesis of the RNA world. Like Rich, he proposed that RNA molecules capable of both genetic information storage and catalytic activity provided the enzymatic functions required for RNA replication, rather than proteins. These RNA enzymes, or ribozymes, eliminate the need for proteins at the beginning of life. Gilbert's idea came in part from papers by Sidney Altman's group, which found that Escherichia coli contained an RNA molecule capable of enzymatic activity. Specifically, the RNA moiety of ribonuclease P was able to cleave phosphodiester bonds on the 5' prime end of transfer RNA precursors in the absence of the protein moiety, with the protein just increasing the efficiency of the reaction. However, Gilbert's idea was most influenced by studies by Thomas Cech's group, where it was found that in Tetrahymena thermophila, a species of protozoa, the precursor ribosomal RNA contained an intron that is capable of performing linked cleavage and ligation reactions to splice itself out of the pre-rRNA and form a mature rRNA molecule without the aid of any proteins. Given the identification of these two ribozymes, Gilbert suggested that an RNA molecule capable of catalyzing the synthesis of new RNA molecules may have existed in the RNA world, thus eliminating the need for protein enzymes at the beginning of life. Indeed, in 2009, Lincoln and Joyce managed to construct a pair of cross-replicating RNA enzymes that indefinitely catalyze the synthesis of each other from oligonucleotide substrates and undergo recombination. Important to the RNA world are the self-splicing introns, which can excise themselves from RNA molecules and reversibly splice themselves back into the same or different RNA molecules. Two self-splicing introns separated by an exon can excise together with the exon and reinsert at a different location, acting as transpose that move exons within and between RNA molecules. This provides an important evolutionary facility to the RNA world, recombination, allowing genetic information to be passed between RNA molecules and increasing the chances of potentially beneficial sequences. Also, RNA molecules containing multiple introns may have been able to excise all introns and recombine their exons to form catalytically active molecules. In this way, with self-replication, RNA can be both the genetic information carrier and functional molecule. Given these major discoveries, Gilbert suggested that the RNA world evolved in a seemingly logical way, from a nucleotide soup formed many various organisations of nucleotides into different RNA molecules, a small amount of which were able to self-replicate. Through intron-based recombination and random mutation over time, the RNA molecules were able to gain new functions and enzymatic activities. The evolution of RNA molecules able to bind to activated amino acids like tRNA and able to link amino acids together like ribosomes enabled the start of protein synthesis. Later support for this was the discovery that the 50S subunit of the ribosome of Thermophilus aquaticus is able to fully function with 90% of its proteins removed, suggesting it may have originally been a single large ribozyme not reliant on proteins. Some of the proteins produced by the ribozymes may have been functional and may have performed better as enzymes and the RNA enzymes. By working more efficiently and quickly, the protein enzymes were able to dominate and eventually take over the role as the main catalytic molecule. Potentially through reverse transcription of RNA, double-stranded DNA evolved, capable of storing genetic information more stably and correcting errors, while still able to be mutated and recombined. Thus, due to the superior performance of both DNA and proteins, 
RNA was relegated to its major present-day function of mediating the transition from nucleotide information to amino acid sequence. It has been almost 40 years since Gilbert proposed the RNA world, an alternative hypothesis of a protein-first world or an RNA-protein coevolution have been suggested. However, the RNA world is still one of the most supported hypotheses of the origin of life.